Welcome back to 7 Billion Humans, a massively ridiculous coding game. Just look at all these little nuggets, we get to kill them all. <laughs> anyway, 69 years in this company, of course. Now, there's basically 69 puzzles in this game, right? Getting harder and harder each time. So naturally, these ones, the hardest ones, the last ones, I've completed, no problem. This is just shit. This one is pretty crap, these three all are. But apart from that, I'm done. Now, you might have noticed these green lights button thingies. Those are optional challenges and we need to complete them. We just have to. Let's do it. Dangerous spread cheating. Ah, oh, shit, I hate this level. Okay, what's the point? Uh, basically, in this game, we write a code, these humans execute, and they complete a puzzle, right? That's it. So here we're supposed to add up the contents of each row and write the result to the cubes on the right side. Each row has these data cubes, we're supposed to write the result here. So if I let this run, this is my code I've written like, I don't know, six months ago probably. In their row, they have to you know, skip these holes, nasty holes, and add up all these numbers, write the result in the end, and once they've all done it, the game checks and we should be fine. Level completed. However, there are these two optional challenges. First challenge is to complete this in under 17 commands. No, sorry, I used 17 commands. That's too many. We need to use 13 or fewer. That's the size challenge. And then there's the speed challenge. So complete this in 32 seconds. My best is 37. Now the way this code works is that the people step right. If they are standing on a data cube, they add the count, the number on the data cube to their memory one. So that's the sum of all the numbers. If there is a hole to the right of them, they step to the bottom right, so under the hole, and basically keep stepping right until they are clear of the hole and then once they reach a wall they pick up the data cube and write the result they've calculated on that cube so that's quite simple right now i've actually noticed as you can see them calculating those numbers is taking a long time contrary to what you might think if there are holes in your row you're actually the first at the end there. That's because you have fewer data cubes, so you do fewer calculating and you just run past the holes. However, the way I've written this code is that once they reach the end, so step right, for example, from this spot, they step right to this data cube, that's the result data cube. And they calculate again. So their sum of the whole row plus this zero, then they check for the hole and then for the wall and write stuff. Now we're just five seconds short, actually long, <laughs> five seconds over the desired time, right? So what I'm thinking is we need to skip this last calculation they're doing. So this last if statement, if to the right of you there is a wall, write the result, I'm gonna move it to here. So step right, first check for the wall and write your result if you're here and only then calculate stuff and check for the holes. So the beginning should be the same, but at the end they just write the numbers straight away, no calculating. This should be much faster. So let's see, still the same amount of commands, and it was faster, but only by three seconds. So we need to shave off two more seconds, or just write this whole thing from scratch, which I think I might actually do, because usually that helps fresh perspective. So from scratch, you're gonna always be stepping right. This person has no data cube there. I think that's fine. But obviously, if you're standing on a data cube, you want to calculate in memory one what's memory one, starting at zero, plus the item under you. So increment by that data cube. And you have to keep doing this thing over and over. But if you reach a wall, at the end, so if to the right of you there is a wall, you want to pick up the data cube under you, write what's in memory one, so write the result on the data cube, and drop it again. Do I have to drop the data cubes? I think I might. And let's end the program, just to be sure. So this should work for the lady on the top there. So all these people fall in their holes, but these 
three, yeah, they made it. And the numbers seem to be correct. So this lady has 11, there's three plus eight, he has nine, six and three, yeah, that's fine. But again, the optimization at the end, the people still calculate with these zeros as well. So what I had before, this if statement before this if statement, like that, should be a little faster. Now, let's figure out what to do with the holes. So if to the right of you, there is a hole, meaning the next step you take, you're gonna die, you're gonna fall in that hole. You should step to the bottom right. I said bottom right, there, bottom right. You could step down and go like that, but stepping bottom right, top right is more efficient as you skip an additional step. So you are bottom right now. Now you need to check if there's a hole for the top right of you. For example, that's basically only for this person. So he steps or she steps bottom right. Top right is still a hole, so she has to step right. So if top right there still is a hole, you step right. And then I'd say repeat this, but based on this room, we don't have to repeat because that's only for her. So step here, still a hole, step right. And then you always step top right again. So only she has an additional step right there. And always only one hole, but I don't think we can you know, skip this if statement, so we're gonna have to check every time, that's a shame. And after the hole, there's a data cube again, right? So that's this if statement. So we have to place it there. Or do we what? No, wait. How did I do it before? Because this lady here has a data cube and a hole, goes around and a data cube again. That sucks, because she steps right, sees the hole first, so she goes around, and then sees the data cube on the other side of the hole. But if I switch it like that, she first sees this data cube, goes around the hole, and then steps right, so skips the last data cube. So I think there should be an additional jump here. So after you're out of the hole, you go there and check for the data cube once more. So let's see how fast this is and if it even works. Yeah, seems to be working. Too many commands, it's a real shame. Ah, there you go. We've done it, 31 seconds. And honestly, I have no idea what I changed. I think it's the whole thing that I changed. Yeah, way too many jumps and if statements here. That's not at all good. And after the hole, there always is a number. So uh, this jump, after you've gone through the holes, doesn't have to be here, but it can be inside here. But it's not gonna be faster because the hole people are always the fastest. So again, 31 seconds. That was to be expected. So what the hell did I actually change? Yeah, so look, this code is exactly the same. Oh, this is funny. Here I do memory one plus your data cube. And originally I had data cube plus memory one, but I don't think that's a big difference. It's honestly strange. Why is this faster? <laughs> I just don't get it at all. Anyway, that's this, the speed challenge. And now I need to write this in, I'm gonna copy this, in 13 commands. So not so much optimizing for time. So I suppose here we don't need the end, hopefully, and they just drop the data cubes. Would this work? Because these write it too, no, it doesn't work, yeah. So the whole people just write this too fast and then they would keep increasing the numbers. So I have to keep the end here. So they just stop executing those commands. But what I could also do is simply slow the whole people down. So perhaps take an additional step because you are losing all that computation time because you have fewer data cubes. So what if I said, if there's a hole next to you, step bottom left, so away from the hole, and then step right, and if to the right of you, top right of you, or above you actually, if above you there is a hole still, you keep stepping right, and then you step up once you're out of the hole. It's actually more commands even. Shit. But now I hope I could just get this end thing away, because maybe I have slowed the whole people down enough Yes, yeah, see, now the whole people are actually the last ones to get there, but now it was too slow. So let's just step down instead. Kind of the same, almost there. Shut up, I don't need your help. Okay, this sucks. I'm gonna put the end there again. Do they have to drop the data cubes? Let's try without dropping them. No, 
No, they have to drop the data cubes. Okay, that's a, that's a shame. So I think these first six commands are a must. So you have to pick up, write, drop at some point. This end may be optional. We'll see how it goes. We don't have to have this if statement. Or do we? Yeah, we don't. So always increment memory one by whatever that you're standing on. So here, there's nothing, but that should be a zero, right? So we have zero plus zero, she does, then zero plus eight and so on. So if I speed this up, it should be a correct solution. Yeah, it is. And we've gotten rid of one command. So just one more, come on. I ideally want to get rid of this jump. So after you come from the hole, from under the hole, you would just calculate here. But there are data cubes before and after the holes. It's really annoying. What happens now if I drop the end command? I think still the same thing. The whole people are gonna be there, yeah, way ahead of everyone else. Wait, what if I always step after calculating? So check for a wall, calculate, it's fine here, then step right, and if you've stepped to a hole, it's fine, cause you're gonna, oh, you're gonna go around it. Oh, shit, okay, that doesn't work. What if, what if you start calculating first, and you always calculate what's to the, right of you? No, 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 no. You do it here, but calculate what's to the left of you. No, that also wouldn't work. Oh, that's stupid. Oh, oh, I know. I think I know. So they reach the wall, right? They write their stuff on the data cube. Then, if I didn't have that end, they would calculate an, another sum, basically. So twice the sum of the row check for all of this, go again, but once again they are next to a wall, so they would pick up and rewrite. So those whole people get there first, they would rewrite the data cube twice before the normal people get there. So I simply need to say, if to the right of you there is a wall, and what you are standing on is a data cube with the value of zero. Now it's gonna freaking work, because the game considers this, even though it's basically two lines, as just one command. So let's see, does it work? So you whole people, speed up a little, calculate, write the result, keep calculating, but don't write anything. Yeah, don't pick up, don't write, because it's no longer a zero, and there we go. So let's see, come on, yes! 13 commands and still basically under 32 seconds or within, you know, so. Both optional challenges completed with this code in Dangerous Spreadsheeting. I love it. So both of these green lights are on and we just have two more levels to go. I think they're gonna be pretty shit to be fair.